Hello everyone, this is a non with kind of training videos and in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to attach a script uh, when the computer starts up or shut down or when the user logs in and log off, uh, log off. So in GPOs uh, we can run some commands right at the start of the computer or when the computer is shutting down. So let's get started. Now in order to attach a script to, <coughs> to a GPO before uh, uh, we can do it from right from GPM. So all we need to do is go into GPM here. So group policy management. Uh, within group policy management, <coughs> uh, what we need to do is we can attach. We can we we need to go into default domain policies. Add it. Now, if you're about to, if you want to attach a script at computer startup, uh, we need to go to window settings. And within Windows settings, there are there is uh, the startup and shutdown script. But if you want to attach a script to uh, a log off or log on, when the user logs in or log off, we need to go into user settings uh, within default domain uh, policies. So we can go in here and attach a script that the the script that you want to be that you want it to be running when the computer when the user logs off, or the script that you want it to be running when the computer startup. Now the first question is. Why would you need a script to be run when the computer starts up? Because most of the time, uh, uh, companies would like to have antivirus software uh, running right at the beginning of the computer when the computer starts up. Or maybe they want to share a disclaimer message uh, when the computer starts up. So uh, they can attach a script to a computer startup policy, and we can attach it to the default domain policy. And once it, once it is applied to the complete network, it will be applied to all the computers within the network. So first of all, let's create a very simple script. <clears throat> now in order to create a very simple script, what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to go into C drive on server 1. And within C drive, let's create a folder. And so when we create a folder, let's create a folder called software. Let's say this folder is a very important folder for our company. And we're going to create, uh, we're going to share it. So first of all, let's share it. <clears throat> Advanced sharing, share, and I'm going to provide full permissions for this. It's up to you. You can, you can keep it read only as well, but I'm going to provide full control. <clears throat> and okay, so this software, this folder is shared. Now, right from here, if we go into sharing, I can see that this folder is shared. I'm going to check this folder. So just copy this location and go into here and just type just just say control v as as soon as you press control v this would come like this and you can press enter you can see that the folder is shared now if i wanted to this folder to be part of all of the computers within the network uh, all of all of the computers within the network so there are two ways one way is that i can go to the client machine and add the folder <clears throat> go to the client machine and add a folder here uh, or if I go to any server I can go and add the folder as a map drive which is not available uh, for example if I need to access the folder from this second server I can enter and I can see that folder here uh, but if I want it to be automatically available to all computers within the network I can use a computer startup script or a login user login script so let's create a script for this uh, in order to in order to script this, well, all we need to do is we need to go here. We need to create a file, a text document file, and I'm going to say this is uh, this is a set folder. We can name it anything. Set folder dot cmd. So when you name a file with a CMD extension or a BAT extension and become a script. Uh, but here it is still, it still appears to be a text document. Here I need to do one more thing here. I need to see all the extension of the file. So uh, in order to see all of the extension of the file so that we, we can make sure that it's a script, all we need to do go on to open Windows Explorer. So you need to open Windows Explorer, this icon, and you need to go to View. <clears throat> you need to go to option and here you need to go into saying hide extension and hide this and now you should be able to see all extensions you can see this file name is dot c 
CMD, but it has a than TXT. So I'm going to remove TXT. And as soon as I do, you will see that it will ask me that we are changing the extension. Now it becomes a script. Now within a script, I'm going to write a very simple command. And that command is net use, net use, and I'm going to, I'm going to just say this path. Now, for now, I know that in order to run, run this command, this will map this folder onto any machine where this command is run, but just to make sure that if this command is correct, let's copy this command and run it in, uh, run this command in, uh, in a CMD. Just before that, we save it in a script. So CMD is here. Before that, let me show you that uh, I don't see any file or folder here. You see C drive and D drive. Let me run this command. Soon as I do, it says run successfully. And and the way we can see that is net use. Just a second. I think I'm missing a drive letter. Okay, yes, it was a drive letter. So F, as you can see, now I can see that folder here. Uh, now that folder, there is nothing in this folder at the moment. Let me create something here. Let's say this is a report folder, and I'll create a text file called uh, financial report. Financial report. So I have two things. Now, what you see is that this, the same folder that we mapped on C drive, that we created in C drive and shared, it appears at F drive here. But this share is not persistent. As soon as you restart this machine, this will be gone. So if you want this to be available on all computers, what we can do is we can create a script like this, which I just created. This is script and place this command here. And I'm going to say that this is, a, let's say it's a Q drive. So net use, make a Q drive of this folder. Now, if you don't put it in a group policy, you will have to do this manually on all machines. But if you put it into a group policy, it should automatically appear on all computer where it runs. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to one more time. No, so let's go back to GPM. Within GPM, right click on default domain policy, go to edit, go to policies, go to Windows settings. And here, go to scripts. And here, go to start a policy. So computer start a policy. For now, there are no policies. First of all, click here, show policies here. And we need to copy the script in this location first. Now, how do I copy the script? I'll go back to, I will so I'll leave this as is. Or first of all, let me close this down for your ease. That where I am, I'm going to close down everything. This as well, and this as well. So that on desktop, I created that script. So you copy the script from here, copy, and then I'm going to open uh, Server Manager. So uh, Server Manager, just open Server Manager, go to Tools, open GPM, and go into Default Domain Policy, Edit, Policies, go to Windows Settings, and go to Startup Settings, go to Startup Script, Show Files, and here, you need to paste it. So I paste this here. And then one thing that I need to do, I need to click here and then copy this location. This complete path, I need to copy. So I'm going to close this and then add and browse. <clears throat> and in here, actually, so I'm already in this location. If, for example, this location, you don't see a script, so you click here and paste that path, you will be, it will bring you to the script. Double click here, no parameter, just this, and then click OK, apply. Now on the same startup script, you can add some PowerShell scripts as well, but here we're just using a simple script, batch file, and it's all done. Now, <clears throat> now we have a startup script for our default domain policy. All we need to do is try it on one of the machines. I'm going to go to server 2. I don't see anything here yet. So what I'm going to do, apply group policy here. <coughs> So here, I'm going to say GP update and enter. And as soon as the policy is applied, we should be able to see the drive letter mapped here. So it is applying. 
sometimes you might need to restart the computer it says it has applied but I don't see a drive letter uh, let me try it again let me reopen this Let's try this uh, force. That should work without force, but sometimes it doesn't. And even if, if this doesn't work, then what I'll do is I'll just restart this machine. So I'm going to go right here, settings, power, restart. Now let me check the client machine. In my client machine, I have client machine. I'm gonna run the script. So first open CMD and say GP update. But before running GP update, let me show you Windows Explorer. I don't, I have just C drive and D drive. If that startup script should run, there should be another drive for the software folder and enter. See it's running. Okay, so group policy failed on this, which might be due to something. So let's check this. Let's troubleshoot this. Let's because last time there was a problem with server two. Let me open event viewer. We need to write this command event viewer. And uh, sometimes these group policy runs smoothly. Sometimes they give these type of small little pickups. So we should be able to troubleshoot them. So here I do see there is an error for group policy. And that error saying that it is because uh, there is no specific message. And here this may be transit. So it might be just a uh, computer needs to be restarted. So let me do that. So I'm going to just restart this here. And this one is restarted. Let's login once it is logged in we go here and we're able to see the Q drive here excellent so I'm able to see the Q drive it's just a permission issue we can set up the permission but our script was run and it was able to create a Q drive uh, and here uh, although it gives us this uh, NTFS error but we are able to uh, we are able to see the files and everything and same thing should happen on this one let's log in so this is known as a startup script so in startup script just like we added just one command you can add a chain of command most of the companies check their uh, check if machines have proper antivirus they check if the machines have proper security patches through startup script uh, if antivirus is not there through startup script they will install complete antivirus uh, by r going through the share and and downloading the file so many thing happens uh, many thing can be can be done from using startup script so here just verify computer and startup script was not able to run on this and i suppose there might be an error message event viewer so probably policy has reached here but it's not running In the meantime, we can check the firewalls. The firewalls are off. And here I do see time difference. If the time is different, it won't run. So let's see on server, it's saying 2.31. Here it's saying, oh, okay. So because of time difference, but no policies can be uh, the policy won't be able to run on this because it's uh, several hours of difference. Yes, so time sync error. Now, in order to fix this, there are a number of different ways. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to workgroup and rejoin it. So, change it to workgroup. I'm going to say AAA. It's a temporary workgroup. It will restart. It will restart once. I'm going to pause the video here. So 
computers uh, computer is restarted it has changed to a work group so what I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna do now is check the IP addresses on this and rejoin it I have uh, network card number two properties oh it does not have IP address and here let me see what IP addresses are we using So the IP address is 192.168.100.10 So I'm going to use 192.168.100.30 And DNS address 192.168.100.10 DNS So that is done. I'm going to rejoin it to the domain. Mm -hmm. Oh, that card is bridged. I need to change it to NAT. So it is a NAT card. This IP address that I changed, it is it was bridged, so it won't work. We must change it to a NAT in VMware workstation. And as soon as you do now, now it will ask you to join. Most probably the group policy should work now. Okay, one more time. Wrong password. And it has joined. Let's restart the machine. It would just take a uh, take few few minutes. Now our goal is to see that if the group policy and the startup script is running or not. So the machine starts. So you see, if the time sync, if the time is not synced with a domain controller, group policies won't run on any machine. And as we already know that from football role, CDC emulator is the role that is responsible for all time, time things throughout the network. So if CDC emulator role is down, time won't be the same on all machines. And if the time is not same, so policy won't work. So at this point, before it shows control or delete, before this it runs the startup script and the computer policies. So sometimes it takes long time. Make sure you're not logged into a client, you log into a domain. And the way we do it is eGreen, administrator, and the password. Let's see, computer, and this time the group policy was run and the startup script brought us this drive here. So, and, and we can see, so this is how we can run a script on all the machines within the network. Thank you for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the second, next video.